All right, so today we're doing a uh, fuel filter replacement on this uh, 2004 Chevy Cavalier. Uh, first thing we had to do is just throw it up on the ramps, like I did. Make sure it's secure, give it a nice little shake. Still on there. Make sure you chalk the tires. Uh, the Haynes book says to remove the fuel pump relay. So there's two tabs right there, one right there, one right there. It just comes right out when you release that. And then the fuel pump one was this one right here. So it should be this one, relay. Just uh, set it down anywhere you know or keep it with you. <laughs> and uh, time to start the car. The car should die out. <clears throat> Obviously, no fuel going through it. Now this is a manual. So make sure you have it in neutral. Start the car. Should die out. Try one more time. Okay, no more fuel in the lines. Keep the car in first gear if it's manual. Handbrake is on. Okay, oh, turn off the ignition. Don't kill your battery. And then, all right, guys, these are the tools that we're gonna need. It's gonna be a 5 8 uh, flare nut wrench. 3 eighths extension with the 10 millimeter for the evap canister. I see a wrench or a ratcheting wrench, whatever you want to call it. Crescent wrench and the fuel filter. This is a AC Delco Pro, not the regular AC Delco. I hear a lot of better reviews about the regular AC Delco one. All right, guys, I've gone ahead and removed the 10 millimeter nut that holds the evap canister. It goes right there. That way it'll give you some room to... Uh, Remove it and give you more room for underneath where the filter is at. The filter is between the fuel tank and the evap canister. So that'll give you more room to do. All right, guys, to remove the evap canister, what you're going to do, slide it toward the driver's side. Give it a wiggle. Be careful with the lines. There are lines up on top, and you don't want them to crack or break. They're very brittle. Oh, hopefully mine don't break while I'm doing this. So that gives me some room to work where the filter's at right there. So the last time I changed it out was back in 9, 2017. And it's time to do it again. All right, guys. Let's got the EVAP out of the way. We're going to do use a 518, a 58, excuse me, and then the crescent wrench to hold it down and see if we can get it out, break it loose. That did the trick. All right, guys, so we need to release this quick release tab. Sometimes we get lucky. Sometimes we don't we just we pry it with a little screwdriver or something right here in between these two. And then sometimes you can, oh, yeah, you get lucky. You gotta bring this one down. So you need to simultaneously push this green one and this green one up at the same time. Obviously, with the free hand, two free hands would be better. Let's see if I can do it with one hand. Try not to break anything. Give me a second. All right, guys, so I was able to clip it off. I'm sorry it didn't record it. My phone had died. Um, so the two tabs went up, and then you can slide out the old filter, which is in here. There it is. I'll show you guys right now the filter and everything that's inside of it. And um, so you put it back in reverse order. So what you're going to do, put the new filter up, slide it through the little hole, push the little green clip down, and then it just clips back up. It's really easy. And this one right here is also reverse order. You're going to hold it with the crescent wrench. And then with the 5 8 um, flare nut wrench, you're going to just tighten it down. And then... Uh, we need to put back the fuel evap canister back up with the 10 millimeter that's right there and obviously we have our tools ready right here to go all 
All right, guys, so we're back at the bench, and here's the old uh, fuel filter inside of this uh, makeshift little container I made for the fuel so it wouldn't pour out. So the Haynes manual says we're supposed to change it out every 30,000 miles, excuse me, or 24 months. So obviously it's been a little bit over two years, so I'll do a better job of changing out the filter. So here's the old filter, like I said. Let's see what's inside of it. You can see it's got not, not too dirty gasoline coming out. Considering from the first time I had changed it out, I think that stuff at the bottom, I'm not sure what it exactly is. Maybe it's just coolant or something from residual in here. But um, as you can see, I did it, last time I did it was uh, 917. All right, guys, so something was brought up to my attention that I think this is the way it goes to the fuel pump. And this is the side where it comes in through the gas tank. So if you look at the gas tank side, uh, I think there's no more in there. Yeah, it comes out a little bit dirtier. There we go. So it is catching all the dirt in there. So I guess it goes in from this side to this side. So it was, obviously it was time to change it out. With that being said, uh, let's start the car and put everything back together. So obviously we took out the fuel pump relay and I had left it inside the Cavalier. Uh, I wouldn't lose it. It is. Just put it in the same way we got it out. There we go. Put the cover back on. Make sure it snaps there. And a positive snap here. That way the box doesn't come out. And let's start the car. Before we start the car, we need to prime it at least three times so that way fuel gets inside the fuel filter let's see if we can hear the fuel filter run now that we have uh, the relay back inside I don't know if you guys can hear that let me pull the camera out I'd say you guys can hear you can hear it filling up with gasoline okay let's see if it'll start cool car started obviously the relay's in gonna take it out of neutral i mean out of first gear into neutral and let's go outside and check for any leaks underneath the car obviously the car is chalked on ramps let's uh avoid the exhaust Let's see if any uh, fuels are leaking out. No, seems good. <laughs> 